watching the clock and telling them to stop when they've talked long enough. So that's not very much moderation, is it? But the reason I'm doing it is because I've been a full-time angel investor for the last 12, 13 years, and so I've watched a whole lot of pitches, and we watched these guys a couple times on their way in. And, um, and, uh, and so it's, uh, it's, it's actually a joy to have a, a chance to introduce a bunch of entrepreneurs who are going to do uh, a great job telling you about their companies. So how many people in the audience have ever pitched for external money? Whoa! <laughs> I think we found all the entrepreneurs and brought them into this room. Um, that's not true. We had a, a 160 or something entrepreneurs registered. Shocked us. So we're really excited about uh, about what's going on in learning and education technology here in Greater Boston, and uh, we think that this is going to be the start of a conversation that goes on for quite a while. So I'm actually going to let each of the presenters introduce themselves as they come up um, as a part of starting their pitch, and each of them are going to go for about five minutes. We're really not going to do questions. We're not going to do feedback. But I'm sure at some point here at the very end we'll um, we'll have uh, uh, we'll have a few minutes to uh, to think about things. We're supposed to be um, back downstairs um, a little after uh, four by four fifty or so, so we really won't have very much extra time. So as an angel, when I'm watching a pitch, I I, I try to think of a bunch of different things. I finally decided that the reason that I had five fingers was that. I couldn't actually remember three things, and so five is a good number, and I can put it on my fingers. So I think about the product. What is the product, um, and um, and how is it going to get into the market? What's the market's acceptance of that product? Is it a free product that will meet a need? I think about um, I think about the the promotion. Basically, how are we going to get into the market? Do we have a clue who the user is? Do we have a clue how to sell? What, is, what, what are all the parts of that? And then I think about um, I think about the profits. Is this going to be a profitable com company? Have they thought through a business model that's going to make a difference? Um, I think about the plan. How far along are we? And what will be the next thing that we need to um, uh, to do in this company, and, and depending on the amount of funds that we're able to raise. And of course, the last thing we think about is the people, um, because people is uh, people are the fuel that make companies really grow, and um, and so that's a lot of fun. So without further ado, we'll introduce our first speaker, um, Austin Morris from Acton Air. Good afternoon, my name is Ivan Morris. I'm founder and chief executive of Academic Merit. There's, if, there's universal agreement that effective writing is absolutely crucial <laughs> to success in college and career. And yet in 2011, 73% of students taking the NAEP scored below proficiency in writing. 73%. And now the Common Core standards are actually raising the level of rigor in writing, threatening to cast a, a very, very bright light on this deficiency, as, as Seth Reynolds mentioned in his, um, in his keynote address. Despite this, this alarming situation, I, speaking as a former teacher, can attest to the fact that writing instruction is the area of the curriculum that has seen the least amount of change over the course of the past few decades, actually. And even now, looking across the vast, exciting, land, vast, exciting landscape of educational technology, it is the area that's experiencing the least amount of innovation. That's really not surprising, because writing instruction is hard. And moving the needle in writing performance takes more than a single lesson plan or a new piece of technology. It takes a comprehensive pedagogical shift that involves not just writing, but reading. And not just instruction, but professional development. Then and only then can technology be leveraged 
to maximize the potential impact of, of all of those elements. That takes time, it takes expertise, and it takes a deep, almost intuitive understanding of the needs of students and teachers. And that is also what we at Academic Merit represent. In the Common Core era, when it comes to writing, what's being asked of students specifically is that they need to put in place a system for measuring student performance in writing over time. That's as opposed to measuring achievement, which is going to be handled by Smarter Balance or PARC. They need to obviously improve instruction, and they also need to expand that instruction across the curriculum, which is a mandate for the, uh, as part of the Common Core. And of course, they need to do all of this on very tight budgets. What we at Academic Merit have done is to develop a suite of award-winning tools to help schools address all of these needs and to do so in a time and cost-efficient manner. Here's how. Assessments 21 provides classroom-based common informative assessments in reading comprehension and writing all aligned directives to common core. Fine-tune is a first-of-its-kind online professional development tool that strengthens and calibrates a teacher's evaluation of student writing to a common core aligned rubric, which in turn prepares them to evaluate Assessments 21 essays. And finally, Literary Companion is a, is a text-dependent close reading tool that strengthens the very skills that were measured by Assessments 21. All of these tools reside in a cloud-based environment and are anchored in uh, patent-pending IP. And what they do, ultimately, is to provide schools with data that they don't have right now, data that can inform differentiated instruction and can also inform um, uh, targeted professional development. So in a nutshell, what we're doing is we're providing the needle and we're helping to move it. And in the process, we are uh, disrupting traditional pedagogy, and we're also disrupting the traditional model of professional development in favor of one that is online and data-driven. We have received ample recognition in this space over the course of the past few years, beating out a number of, of uh, larger companies in the space on my dad. And as we move into this, uh, in, in, our, in the segments in which we compete, which is professional development and classroom assessment products, which are multi-billion dollar segments, we bring a number of advantages not the least of which is our first of the space timing and our first of its kind teacher-generated data. We, uh, in, uh, our tools are sold on an annual subscription per user basis. And in 2013, as schools are ramping up their adoption of the Common Core, what we saw and found is validation of our value proposition. In particular, with our early adopters, what we think is going to be the, the model for us that's really going to resonate with schools, which is our integrated model of professional development and assessment. We have 4,000 paid users, students and teachers, uh, 70 and 70 teachers, 4,000 students, 70 teachers who are um, uh, currently using and loving our products right now. And now, to scale our sales outreach, we are uh, talking to a number of professional development firms that are seeing a natural complement between the data that we provide and the services that they provide. From here, our, we have plans in place to scale our products through crowdsourcing and also to expand our offerings down into the lower grades and across the curriculum. Today, we've raised just over a million dollars. We have an open round right now with about half of the committee. And we're going to use those funds to finance our sales and growth strategies going forward. I'll just close by saying that uh, Seth Reynolds mentioned in his um, keynote the fact that there are four qualities, four traits that, uh, that companies that are going to be most successful in this space have. Take a close look at academic merit, and I think you'll see all four. Thank you very much. I forgot to say that all five of these companies are currently fundraising. <laughs> Academic Room is a social platform where academia meets industry. 
while today most of the companies in higher ed are focusing on the delivery of education itself, we are focused on the delivery of academic content and market opportunities for academics. <coughs> The problem we are addressing is twofold. First of all, whether you're from academia or um, industry, today there is no place where you can go and find everything related to your discipline at one central location. By everything, I mean content, people, and opportunities. And secondly, there is a huge disconnect between industry and academia. Uh, there is no platform where there is collaboration between industry and academia. And today, if industry is looking for academics and um, want to have them work on a speci specialized project within a specific discipline, there is no place where they can go and find them. So we are addressing this problem by Academic Room. Academic Room is a discipline ecosystem of content, people, and opportunities all at one central location. People in academia and industry are interacting with the content that is fed into our system in multiple formats. They are interacting with each other, and most importantly, they are bidding on, uh, bidding on the, uh, the projects that are listed through our marketplace. So we have jobs and uh, networking and content uh, all at one uh, place. So what we are doing here is hiding the structure because uh, we are empowering the academics who, uh, by providing them career options outside academia, uh, they have been marginalized for centuries. They have been uh, uh, performing these services in exchange of honorariums or very low fee. But now they can actually set their own rate and bid on the projects that they want to bid on. And on the other hand, industry can uh, get unprecedented direct ex access to academia and they can actually recruit high quality uh, qualified individuals uh, uh, and basically uh, uh, get the job done at much lower cost than you know going with R&D companies or uh, 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 intermediaries like McKinsey. So the current status is we uh, had a soft launch about eight months ago and uh, uh, this is uh, what a discipline portal looks like. Once you click on the uh, micro disciplines, the content further gets uh, filtered out. And uh, uh, we launched about eight months ago and we have got a good amount of traction. Uh, 60,000 uh, uh, users coming every month and 20,000 registered experts on the site right now. And we're based out of uh, Harvard Innovation Lab. Our market is going to be uh, on the provider side. We are envisioning um, uh, the academics and the industry professionals who are interested in freelancing because we believe that every person who has a graduate degree uh, is capable of freelancing. Online work market is uh, 1 billion, uh, which was in 2012, but it's one of the fastest growing markets, uh, growing at the rate of 10% annually. Um, uh, on the employer side, uh, we have um, industries uh, that we have identified that require consulting and uh, we'll be focusing on underserved, less competitive and high potential markets first. Our competition, there are several, uh, several players in the market but no one is exactly doing what we are doing. Uh, competition includes uh, traditional expert networks like DLG, uh, they charge exorbitant fees, uh, they uh, basically cater, uh, cater to uh, you know, uh, Fortune 500 and people like research companies with offline intervention. <coughs> then there are Q&A services like Zintro uh, that get your questions answered through uh, you know, facilitating phone call, calls or video chats. InnoCenter is a crowdsourcing platform, uh, but here only uh, a few winners take all and the rest are all participants. And uh, lastly, there are freelancing sites like Ola, um, Odesk and Elance, but they uh, specialize in IT and marketing and administrative jobs and uh, uh, cater to small businesses mainly outsourcing it to India. So no one is exactly doing what uh, 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 we are doing. So we are a social marketplace where people are actually uh, interacting with their peers. They are consuming content and at the same time they are bidding on the opportunities right from the dashboard every day. And uh, uh, so we want to obtain Odesk and Elance kind of a bet for, uh, for 10,000 disciplines and uh, micro disciplines. So that's our long term vision. Our, um, our business model is going to be 15% commission of every transaction and we'll charge a small estate fee uh, to companies just to make sure that the right projects are coming on the uh, site. And our average project is going to be uh, $5,000. 
And in terms of uh, customer acquisition, we are going to use two prompts approach. Uh, uh, for larger projects, we uh, will be targeted by sales team, and the smaller projects will be using the PPC advertising and inbound uh, uh, marketing. And we believe that the network that we have and the user generated content that, has, uh, that is growing every day is going to be uh, a major force in bringing in the traffic and it's going to act as a multiplier and lever for our uh, uh, business. Our management team consists of myself and Harpreet Singh. Uh, uh, Harpreet Singh, uh, I have over uh, uh, a decade of experience um, uh, in running IT projects and uh, uh, have worked for companies like Fidelity and Stagecraft and Harpreet uh, uh, brings in both sides because he has lived, uh, uh, he was uh, on Wall Street for a couple of years and then he did his PhD at Harvard so he brings, uh, he has lived okay, both worlds. Next slide. <laughs> so we are um, uh, looking for funding and this is our information uh, if you are interested in talking to us. Thank you. because there's, there's two things that are happening. One is there's a big culture shift. Uh, uh, states and uh, the federal government are looking at ways to make schools more effective through changing their processes. But at the same time, technology is now being rapidly up, uh, taken up by schools. They're very willing to look at uh, SaaS solutions. They're bringing tablets into schools. So both of these things together make it, I, we believe, sort of the first wave of new technology in education. TeachPoint provides uh, a teacher evaluation platform. So we have a native iPad app that administrators can use, essentially acts as their own personal database of teacher and evaluation information. They can carry it from classroom to classroom, do evaluations, it can be used with and without Wi-Fi, uh, and automatically notify the teachers electronically when observations are created. Uh, we have a web portal for teachers to log into, uh, and they can read their evaluations, do self-evaluations, or in fact respond directly back to the administrators. So essentially it's a collaborative platform to implement a teacher evaluation system. However, we're not, we don't provide the system itself, but we do provide a library of forms and so forth, but we feel we're process and form agnostic. We provide a platform upon which a school can customize their own evaluation process. And of course, we have electronic signatures and photos and attached, we can attach documents and do a number of other things. But what we really focus on is providing two-way communication between administrators and teachers because we feel that that's really the professional development aspect of the evaluation process. Um, and what a lot of students, superintendents realize is that if you're going to spend the time to um, do an evaluation process and create uh, an infrastructure, you want, to, you want to spend most of the time on the 98% of the teachers that are really motivated and interested in making the experience better and not so much on the 2% that might need remedial uh, help. So um, we provide tools for system administrators to uh, implement the system. Uh, it takes four easy steps. We integrate with school information systems. Uh, and we provide tools for the central office to manage and track the uh, evaluation process over time. Uh, the core team is myself. I've been in software development for 25 years, 10 uh, in mobile and web. Diane Kelly is the director of business development sales, and Chad Romelli is the director of operations. We started, we launched the product uh, in the fall of uh, 2011, so a year and a half ago, with two districts uh, that were our, uh, really our co developers with the product. Uh, in the last 12 months, we've signed on about 100 school districts and 22,000 users. Uh, so we've, we've seen a lot of uh, success in the, in the recent past. Uh, we feel that TeachPoint is uh, well positioned in a SAT for, uh, to make it very affordable for any school. Really, the, uh, the big competitors that were out there before the Race to the Top uh, program took place were 
really way too expensive for most schools. They're very expensive, plus $20,000 plus per year pricing, which makes, means only the wealthiest commi uh, communities can really adopt those types of systems. On the other end of the spectrum, some schools try homegrown systems, but they don't have the enterprise capabilities that you really need to do to have to uh, implement a, a system of uh, student uh, teacher evaluation. So $20 per year, very affordable, easy to purchase, doesn't really hit any of the RFP requirements for schools. We sell directly to schools uh, and districts. So our plan really is to uh, bring investors in and really expand on their success. To We've been mostly regional, most of our schools are in Massachusetts and Vermont, uh, and to accelerate R&D. So what we're looking at is to try to um, continue the vision of what is really a unique mix of the social interaction, the flexibility, and the oddity. So if you sort of think of uh, the tool, what we really want to be is something that's as flexible as Google Docs, but has the social interaction of LinkedIn, but at the same time has the auditing and security of a QuickBooks, because you're really dealing with private information, and you have to, um, you have to be very careful with that. Uh, and on top of that, we want it to be mobile, um, and enable as well. So um, right now we're in teacher evaluation, but we believe that the technology we're developing uh, is very applicable to student assessment and after that uh, even uh, non-educational um, human resource management types of systems. So thank you very much. Okay, our next presenter is from Quadrangle, so um, we will put you by himself, and we will get set up in just a second here. Thank you. Hi. So um, I'm going to start this off by asking you a couple questions that I think will be a little illustrative of where it is that we're going and what it is that we're solving. How many people in the room raise your hands who went to college? Uh, raise your hands again if you own a mobile device of some kind, a smartphone. Pretty much the exact same number. How many of you donated to your respective institutions last year? It's better than most rooms, but then it gets cut in half. Um, here's the issue. It's an interesting format. So there are roughly 4,000 universities in the United States with 90 million alumni, and only 12% of them donate to their respective institutions on an annual basis. A computer ate this, by the way. Um, and here's the issue. Schools are struggling to meet their budgets. And, and one of the reasons, even though 90% of those who have graduated from universities in the United States are charitable on a given basis, right, annually, what they're not doing is giving to their schools. And what we find when we talk to alumni is that there's a breakdown in communications. It feels very much like a one-way street. And we seek to solve that issue by offering a mobile platform to alumni that re-engages them on their terms, gives them a value proposition for being involved with their universities and providing a very robust back-end SaaS solution to the universities that we work with. And here are a couple of quick features that I want to talk to you through. On the alumni side, a very important component for us is about curated content. What was your major? Uh, what information comes in from LinkedIn about your career, about your profile, who you are, what you do? What is it that you're reading when you're using our platform? This information brings back the content that's of the most interest to you as an alum. Now, where the wonderful throughput is on that is two ways. One, content's compelling. It makes my school and my major look great. I'll share it to LinkedIn and brag. I might share the fact that my University of Arizona Wildcats kicked the tails in of Arizona State the other day on Facebook and Brad. Um, but what I'm also interested in doing is where there's a giving campaign connected to the content that I'm reading, we're creating that natural connection between content and giving. And this is something that when we talk to universities, they get very, very excited about. The second big component that keeps them coming back every day is pay it forward. This is the third dimension that LinkedIn doesn't have. We're platform agnostic, we bring in LinkedIn API data, branch out from Facebook, so on and so forth, and we use that data to empower alumni to help each other in a frictionless capacity. I'd love to show you this through a demo later. And finally, on the back end, it's all about donations coming back to schools, it's all about increasing the level of engagement, right? And it's about giving them insights that they don't have. Wouldn't it be wonderful for a university to know that you just got promoted from director to VP, and here are the last 10 stories that you just shared that really resonate for you and what they have in common. 
Now I can make a phone call that matters. Our market is fairly substantial. All in all, it's about $2.5 billion on an annual basis here in the United States. Our first target are small private institutions, graduate schools like an HBS or a Sloan. They work very quickly, they're incredibly entrepreneurial, and they have the budget and the demand. The nice thing is that the budgets range and they're always very, very large. University of Michigan, 40 million, but even at the very, very smallest of schools with a couple hundred undergrads, still spending about 200 grand in communications. The mean return per advancement dollar in the United States, $3.33. This is our metric that we are seeking to be. We want to bring back more than $3.33 per dollar that universities spend with us. Our go-to-market strategy, very clear. Just as I mentioned, those professional and small private schools, they move quickly. We're in discussions with a number of them. Client success within higher ed begets marketing and sales velocity. But we're also currently in discussions with some partners like iModules and uh, Blackboard from conversation this morning. Sales traction has been great. Almost no outreach. Harvard called us. We didn't call them. That's awesome to hear. I know on MIT they didn't call us too. <laughs> right now where we are, we're bootstrapped. We're about 50% of the way through our product. We are raising money. Come write a check. Um, and hopefully we can move forward together. I thank you very much for the time. Um, our team really quickly though, uh, I come from a background of launching products in the higher ed, a GM and VP of sales and strategy in a number of businesses. Our CTO is a well-vetted venture CTO and our head of design has done projects for everybody from Nike to San Francisco State. That's my info. Come see me. understanding in real time. We believe that assessment is flawed. Currently testing practices are working against teachers, students, and the overall learning process. And we're going after two specific problems. First, we think that the classroom lacks real-time visualization. Teachers are getting too few data points throughout the class in order to make informed decisions. And we know that there's a lot more data to see. We also think that quizzing and testing is an extremely manual process. Through the creation, the printing, the distribution, and the grading, teachers are spending way too much time on that manual <coughs> process. As a result, we've created Socrative. Socrative is a classroom tool, as I said, for measuring and visualizing student understanding. What we do is a teacher engages students in pre-made quizzes, single question activities, short answer responses, or games. The students quickly answer these activities, our system grades them, and provides data reports back to the students and teachers in the moment, in the classroom when it matters, so that teachers and students can determine what to do at that moment. Do I stay where I am? Do I go back and reteach a concept? Or do I move forward? It puts the teacher in control of using their time and figuring out how to best work with the students. A key to the platform is that it's accessible across all devices and all platforms. We work on tablets, smartphones, laptops, desktops, which still exist, yes they do in classrooms, and we also have iOS and Android apps, and we work on all browsers. Our second most popular browser by our users is Internet Explorer, believe it or not. And this isn't Internet Explorer 10 on the new Surface tab. This is Windows Internet Explorer 7 and 8, okay? So in the education market, you have to understand who you're dealing with, and you have to supply tools that work in all environments. We're supporting bring your own device, and we're supporting one-to-one. -one. We want to be in every classroom helping to provide a solution. It's been working. We have over 1,000 teachers signing up per day through our freemium model. And since August, we've had 150,000 new teachers join our community. That brings us close to a quarter million teachers in the last year. And you ask, okay, they're coming in free, but are they using you? Yes, they are. We've had 336,000 quizzes used in our system, and over 170,000 of those quizzes have been shared. What that's doing is that's creating a community amongst our teachers, where they're passing content amongst themselves that's created in our system. They're improving that content, and they're improving the quizzes that they're providing the students. 
making an overall better product for everyone. We've had 62 million questions answered in our system in 2012. That's 62 million opportunities to measure and visualize student understanding. That's a lot of opportunity to make decisions about how you want to teach and how you're learning. We have over 100,000 daily users between our teachers and students. We see the market is 1.8 billion. It's a formative and a summative assessment mixture, and we do both. 50% of our usage right now is on summative, and 50% is on formative. And we're going to figure out which way we want to tilt, but right now that's perfect for us because it's getting used often and our teachers are getting very sticky and they love us. The first two tools we're going to make obsolete, hardware clickers and the sketch on. This is how we're going to get into schools and how we've been doing it. We don't think that we can sell directly to schools ourselves, so we're going through a partnership channel. We're going to enterprise solutions through good partners. Apple Higher Ed, we're partnering with. We're partnering with resellers who know the K-12 market. And we're also working with new tablet manufacturers who are looking for apps to go on their education-specific tools. They will be putting us in the hands of the teachers and students. And we are a successful app that makes their product better. We're also going direct to teachers. We're an inaugural app in the Edmodo App Store. We have partnerships with two LMSs to sell directly to teachers. This morning, we just got asked to join the Nook, so we can be on that sales channel as well. And we also are breaking out our own sales channel in 2013. Who's doing all this stuff? Well, I'm the guy in the top. That's me. I'm a former teacher and technology project manager. And the guy below that, that's Michael. And he does everything tech for our team. He was an aerospace engineer, master's student, graduate too. And he also has been in test prep. We're a small team, but we're highly efficient, and we get a lot done. In summary, we're the future of measuring understanding. We've been bringing in 25,000 teachers a month, new teachers. We have outstanding sales partnerships to get into these channels in districts and teachers specifically, nationally and internationally, P through 20. So that's elementary, middle school, high school, college, and beyond. And we have close to 100,000 sales in 2012 to prove out our model. We're raising a seed round which I assume you knew, and we're going to maintain our growth and we're digging deeper into usage. We want to take those users that are using us and we want to have them use us more often. We're going to do that through adding talented engineers in marketing and sales. We're going to add tagging and sharing so that our content becomes even more valuable to our users. And we're also going to expand our sales and partnership channels. This is my contact information. I'm Ben. You can find us at Socratic.com or email me at Ben at Socratic.com. Okay, well, I think that's our five companies. So um, we didn't have Socratic give us their app for free to all vote with, but why don't we just take a show of hands and see um, how people thought we did. Okay, academic merit. Who thought that was pretty cool? Yay. And who thought the uh, academic room? Yay. Okay, and our next one was uh, Teach Point. And Quadrangle. And Socratic. Okay, now we know what you guys are thinking. Now we just have to find some more investors. Okay, so, um, um, wait, we have somebody wants to make a comment? You, you, you've heard a lot of these. How did these? Do general uh, observations. Well, everybody's scaling is in this picture, so there's lots of uh, there's lots of stories about lots of users. <laughs> I'm just wondering from your perspective, any any take. Well, again, I think uh, from my perspective, uh, we've, we 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 picked the ones that we thought were in fundraising that were really credible and doing a great job. We think that in most cases there'll probably be a few more things to add on to make them be able to, you know become as um, as sticky and has as powerful business model as as, as is possible. But uh, but yeah, we we are we're, we're pretty psyched here. Okay, we have another hand. I just want to say that I'm a teacher and I use Socratic and I love it. I use it. <laughs> 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 